video tutorial on data description. So this tutorial, we're going to learn about the tapply function. Uh, it's called tapply versus tapley, but keep that in mind. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. We're going to stick our, around with this HR2 RVV data set that we read in last time. So let's read it in again and continue on with it. Now, what we want to be able to do is last time we learned about the apply function, which just runs down the entire column. What if we wanted to group our results together by some other variable? For example, in this case, in our this data set, sex. So let's give this a go. So let's give this a try. So use the t apply function. It's very simple to use. Um, you just have to get used to which one you need to use in terms of apply there's t apply there's a whole bunch of them uh we're just going to cover a few so the t apply function first you would put the column that you're interested in hr two dollar sign i'm going to be interested in strength right now and i'm going to put in here the column which i wish to group by so this is going to be hr two dollar sign sex because that's the grouping one and then i'm going to put the function that i want so uh, well, we're going to write this in a comment here real quick, but let's see what this does. And notice what it did. It, it created the mean for both females and males and put them in a row. So let's uh, put here a comment. So put in the T apply, put in the uh, column to analyze, comma, column to group, and then the function that you're interested in. That's basically how it works. And we can do this for many of the functions. So uh, let's do this real quick for a standard deviation. We can do it again for uh, what, IQR. We could do this again for uh, the quantiles. So with quantiles, there's more operations uh, that you, or more arguments you need to put in here but so I'm going to put 0 0.2 0 0.5 0 0.8 to be consistent with our last one and let's see what happens with each of these so again I get a row again I get a row and now I don't get a row actually what it's returning now is a list right if you look at this it has dollar sign f and dollar sign m it's returning a list for each one so because there's more than one number so what we're going to do is we're going to start playing with these and try to stack them up and create a table that has all of these results in a single table because often being able to present a table is much nicer than having a whole bunch of code between the rows so what we're going to do first is we're just going to copy all this I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put in here, create a table of results. And I'm going to paste it back in under there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write each one of these into a variable. So let's see what I want to call this one. Maybe M1 for the mean, S1 for the standard deviation. And I will write it into these variables. So don't worry about this. I can make this one IQR1. Now, you don't want to make it IQR directly because IQR is a function in R, and if you overwrite it, you might be kicking yourself later. So, I'll put here QTLs1, and this will write each one of these into these variables, and when I run them, you will see them show up over here in the values or in the global environment and notice qtl1 is a list of two like i said it produces a list so let's see if we can't start stacking these things up and making something that's useful so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do r bind because i noticed that the rows so i want each, just stack them up on top of each other so i'm just going to do this simply first with m1 s1 IQR1 and QTL1 and see what pops out. Run this and notice it kind of gives me what I want. Obviously this down here isn't what I want. This QTL1 numeric 3 numeric 3, that's a bit of a problem. But the other ones are kind of okay except I really don't like the names on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and change this up just a little bit. I'm actually going to use the function word mean because it's not assigning it to a variable or object, so it's still a, a word I can use. I'm going to use the st uh, standard deviation as STDEV. 
I'm going to do IQR. It doesn't hurt it here because it's a row name, not a column name. So, or a function name. It can, it's fine as a column name as well. It just can't be a function name or object name. Okay, so this has us part of the way there. So we have female, male, mean, standard deviation, IQR. Uh, now we just have to figure out how to deal with this QTL. And if we remember, we can go back and uh, think about how to deal with lists. So I'm going to take this out of here right now, and I'm going to go above it and create something new. So I'm going to make this QTL2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these in a column because I want to attach the columns together. So I want to C bind the two lists together. So I'm going to do QTL1 dollar sign female. And I want to make sure the order is the same here. Female, male. And then I also want to do QTL1 and male. Now, I also need to make sure that the names match. So I'm going to make this F equals and M equals because this is setting the column name so that they will match up. So when I run this, I get, when I look at QTL2, what I was looking for. So I get female, male, and then I have the quantiles over here that I'm interested in or the percentiles that I'm interested in and the quantiles in the middle that, that it gives me back. So now I can add this on to what I have here. So instead I can just do uh, QTL2 and I don't want to do anything with the names because this table already has row names. So I, I don't want to mess with that. And if I run this here, You'll quickly see it produces a table that has a whole bunch of information for me. Uh, I can add other information, but right now what I want to show you is this tapply function is really handy to group things together and make summaries by grouping. Uh, it doesn't have to be just two groups. Here I made it two groups just to make it easy to see and easy to play with. But it's really important that you see that you can then produce these tables that you can then export into a file that like Excel. Because this is much looks much nicer in Excel than having to cut and paste each row into an Excel file. You know, co copy it from here, paste it into Excel. This is all grouped together and you can easily work from there. All right, so this has been the R video tutorial on how to start using T-Apply. Give it a go and see what happens.